if, it, if we're there for a humanitarian mission, it means to reduce bloodshed and bring an end to the war quickly. If we're there to exhaust the Russians or regime change, then doesn't it mean that the Ukraine is just a pawn in a geopolitical battle between two great superpowers and that our strategy is to, is to put the flower of Ukrainian youth into an abattoir of death in order to exhaust Russia. And if that's true, then we need to know about it. If it's not true, then we need a pretty good discussion with the President and the Secretary of Defense and others to tell us exactly what are we doing there. And Oh. I want to talk just a little about some of the costs of the war. We've now committed $113 billion to the Ukraine. For, for reference, the entire budget of EPA is $12 billion. The budget of CDC is $11 billion. We have 57% of Americans, we have a crisis here. We have a war on the poor. 57% of Americans cannot put their hand on $1,000 if they have an emergency. One quarter of Americans go to bed hungry. We have 1.5 million veterans who are living below the poverty line. We have 33,000 veterans who are homeless. We have 27 veterans, 23 veterans a day who are killing themselves. The war on the poor is a blood war. I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, an old friend, Keith Amato. Can you stand? Okay. And Keith is a commercial fisherman out of Provincetown and wealthy. Um, and a occasionally Shinnecock and I slip off the Long Island. Um, and we, we have a, uh, I'm, we've known each other for many, many years. We have a, a weekly ritual where Keith discovered years ago that at Whole Foods drops the price of oysters on Friday to $1. This is an ad for Whole Foods. So, to, for $1. He knows this because his son, his son in law actually owns the Wellfleet oyster bed where the oysters come from. So every Friday, Keith goes and picks up 30 oysters, um, brings them to my house, and I pay for the oysters. He shucks them, he makes the mignonette sauce, mignonette sauce, and we eat them. And, uh, and we have an amazing friendship and, we're, and are very, very close. Uh, but Keith is on disability. That does not allow him to work anymore. And he has been surviving on food stamps. And his, on, on March 1st, he got a recorded telephone call from the government saying that his food stamps allocation is going to be dropped next month from $283 a month to $25. 30 million Americans got that phone call. 30 million Americans. The same month, the government announced that it is going to drop Medicare for up to 15 million Americans. The same month, the government announced that it is printing 300 billion extra dollars to pay off the Silicon Valley Bank, to bail it out. And we announced, the Biden administration announced 750 additional millions of dollars that we're going to send to the Ukraine. So we have money for wars. And we have money for bail ba bankers that need bailouts. But what happens to the American people when they are on hard times? Shouldn't we have compassion for them? No. Oh. 
Okay, so let's look at some math. We're borrowing $6 billion a day, our government, to, to pay off the interest on our debt. $6 billion, we're borrowing it mainly from the Chinese and Japanese in order to pay for the wars and the bailouts and the lockdowns. Now, the wars in Iraq and after its aftermath cost us $8 trillion. $8 trillion. We spent $16 trillion on the lockdown. That's $24 trillion. Does anybody wonder why we don't have a middle class in this country anymore? No. So we, how do we get this money? Well, we're borrowing it as fast as we can from the Japanese and the Chinese, which is not a good thing. But the other thing is we're just printing it. Between 1900 and 2008, we printed, printed a trillion dollars. That was all of the money we printed in a century. Between 2008 and today, we've printed 10 trillion. 10 centuries worth of wealth to pay for bailouts and lockdowns. We're just printing money. And what happens to what, how does that pay it off? Through inflation. And inflation is a tax on the poor. Yeah. Oh, Keith, Keith had his, his food stamp checks uh, dropped to $25, and you try going shopping on $25. Uh, you, you, uh, you have to be crazy to think that that is going to, so you're going to survive a week on $25 a day. Oh, He's spending $25 on food. They got his food stamps to pay the inflation. His food bill has doubled over the past two years. And for basic food stuffs like chicken, dairy, and milk, it's gone up 78%. We are starving American people, and we are cutting them off from the, from the kind of aid that we should be giving that we're instead spending on being the policemen of the world. We have 800 bases around the world now. We have, uh, we spend $800 billion, $880 billion a year on our military. We were supposed to get a peace dividend. After the Soviet Union collapsed, we were supposed to go from $6 billion to $2 billion. That was a peace dividend. And then we were going to spend the rest, bring it home, and build schools and infrastructure. Instead, we've made up a bunch of foreign enemies and different enemies and things that we got to do to spend more money. The military industrial complex and the intelligence agencies are telling us we got, instead of dropping it to two, we raised it to 8.8. .8. So that's where we are. This is, this is what's happening. You know, if you go back to the beginning of our history, our f f founders, made so many clear warnings against Americans getting involved in foreign wars, because they said um, it is uh, be, trying to be an imperium abroad is going to destroy democracy at home. It is going to turn us into a garrison state, a national security state, and a surveillance state. They said it's Anath the two are inconsistent. You cannot be an imperial nation abroad and a democracy at home. And um, my uh, and John Quincy Adams really spoke for all of the framers when he said, "America goes not abroad in search of monsters to destroy. It is it's something we cannot afford to do in our country." My grandfather Joseph Kennedy said, "Well, we sh we we need to build fortri fortress America." We need to arm ourselves to the teeth at home and then and make ourselves too expensive to conquer and then build our economy because the economy is the source of strength, not bullets and weapons. It's having a strong economy, a strong middle class.